So the last part is uh, insight and advice for undergrad grad students and international students. So how can undergraduate students prepare for grad school? And then what, before they made a decision whether I should pursue the grad school or not, what should they consider? Yeah. Um, I think if you're thinking about going to grad school, you really want to make sure you kind of love research because mm -hmm. graduate school is like five to six years. You know, it's not five years of classes. It's <laughs> one year of class and four years of mentoring or advising, you know, with one or two faculty members. And so I think you really got to love research. Mm -hmm. um, I think you need to be smart. I don't think you need to be brilliant. You just need to be smart. Okay. okay? You need to be hardworking and you need to have some tenacity. In other words, mm -hmm. some fight. Um, because you know it's going to be challenging and you need to be able to come over, overcome those challenges and keep working. Mm -hmm. And I think those are kind of the key attributes um, mm -hmm. that you want to think about. And graduate school is, is, is good, but it's not for everyone. And, you know, other jobs and positions after undergraduate are, are equally important and, uh, you know, and, and good to do. That's great. Okay. So... What does it take to succeed in grad school? And then what are some essential skill set and mindset to develop? And how would you develop yeah. them? Um, I think certainly reading is important mm -hmm. and learning about experimental design. Um, I'm always talking about do the control, do the okay? Control. You're gonna do these sets of experiments, but do the control so that we actually know what the differences mean. So I think experimental design is key. I think learning about how to formulate a hypothesis mm -hmm. and then how to come up with an experimental plan are key. Um, I think it's also important that you learn to write mm -hmm. and that means you're writing multiple articles. You know, I don't think a PhD is one paper. <laughs> I think a PhD is several papers because you want to tell a story and that means you need to write and that means you need to correct the writing and get it just right. Um, you need to learn to go to conferences and mm -hmm. speak and give a presentation. Mm -hmm. I think those are all really, really critical. Mm -hmm. um, I need to be able to talk with you. <laughs> I also need to talk with my mom, you know, who knows no <laughs> science. And, you know, how do you convey the problem that we're working on so that everybody understands how important it is? Mm -hmm. And I think those are really good to do. And then you'll learn how to manage time in graduate school yeah. a little bit. You'll learn skills like experimentally, but that will come. I think the bigger, bigger items you want to learn in grad school are all about experimental design and hypothesis and thinking, right? Asking questions. And then I think it's really important to, it's kind of a trick. So if you have a notebook and you're taking notes in your notebook for the experiment you're doing, I think you should save the last two pages of your notebook to write down ideas. Because I think something that we don't teach very well is how do you be creative? How do you stimulate people having ideas as yeah. opposed to just doing research? Okay. And I think it's really important to, you know, ask questions so that you think about new things, but also have your own ideas and to write them down. Um, and so you'd like to think at the end of the PhD, maybe you've got 50 ideas. Mm. Maybe they're not good, but at least they're ideas. Yeah. yeah. And ideas will help you think. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's really important to do. Right. Um, These are the big takeaways. Yeah. From grad, school. Uh, graduate school is not about becoming a tech, a technician, mm. right? Graduate school is really about learning how to think yeah. and to solve problems. Yeah. I actually talked to uh, like a former graduate, uh, yeah, who graduated, who worked with you before. And then he, he told me, he shared with me about the three stages of grad students. Yeah. That's a very critical part of a philosophy. Do you want to share? Sure. So, um, Students often ask me, how long does it take to get through grad school? I don't know, maybe five to six years. It's not going to take eight. I just can't handle that. So it'll be shorter than that. But I think the first part of graduate school, we're both talking. And maybe even I'm talking a lot more. Um, and then in this middle part of graduate school, we're both talking for sure. You're proposing a lot of experiments. Um, and you're starting to lead the conversation and lead the project. And then I think the last part of graduate school, you're re you are leading the project. It is your mm -hmm. project. You know exactly what to do. You are designing the experiments. You are testing your hypotheses. And what I find is that I'm not talking anymore. Uh -huh. And the student's doing all the talking. And I think when you get to that stage, that kind of tells me it's time for you to graduate because I can't teach you anything more. And so you are at a stage where it's important to move on and, and do something else. The shortest I've had 
for a PhD has been about four and a half years. What? Are they and doing like computational stuff? No, they were doing no? experimental. And oh the longest has been about six and a half. Okay, that's not so too bad. So it's not too bad, yeah. Yeah. you know. Um, but most people are between five and six. Okay. And it really depends on, you know, the project, um, how experiments go, Goes. outcomes, mm -hmm. how quickly we learn. Yeah. And I think that's all normal. Okay, so for current undergrads and also grad students who are still early, at the early stage of grad, graduate school career, uh, there are many topics I'm interested in. How do I balance between exploring versus, uh, versus focusing? I think in, in graduate school in particular, you have to focus on kind of one particular subject matter, yeah. right? That's mm -hmm. your thesis, that'll be your PhD thesis or your master's thesis, it's one particular topic. Um, I think it is important during grad school to get exposed to other areas. And mm -hmm. so that happens through seminars. Mm -hmm. It happens through talking with other graduate students or yeah. with other faculty members or yeah. attending different group meetings. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really critical, but you have to have your focus and you have to be narrow in what you're learning. But at the same time, you don't want to become so narrow that you don't appreciate other things that are going on. Mm -hmm. I think for undergraduates, it's a little harder because during undergraduate education, you're being exposed to certain subjects that are often dictated by your curriculum at sure. the school, yeah. right? And so you don't necessarily always get all the classes yeah. that you might like to take. Yep. So I think, you know, your first year in graduate school, it could be a time to take classes that you normally would not oh, ever have a chance yeah. to take. I see. So when I, in my first year in graduate school, I took a ceramics class. Because I knew nothing about ceramics. And I thought it'd be interesting <laughs> to learn something about ceramics. So. You know, I think doing that little extra to learn something new is, is important. Okay. But as an undergrad, you want to make sure that um, obviously you pass your classes, you know, you get into grad yeah. school, um, but you want to try to get some research experience. Mm -hmm. You want to try to work in a lab and see if you really like it. That makes sense. Uh, and also for current grad students, and uh, like I have several projects going on at the same time, but how do I know which one is worth my time? to pursue it and also when when is a good time to stop a project before i waste too much time yeah. and energy yeah killing a project is always hard you know, it's hard <laughs> for the student and it's hard for the, fa the faculty member um, in my group generally you'll have kind of one project okay and you'll have that for let's say the first two years and then after that we might branch off and you have a second project or the project may mutate a little bit and transform into something a little bit different um, and then oftentimes it's just based on how well the projects are going. Mm. And so if you have two projects and they're about at the same place, but one looks like it's gonna advance a lot quicker and maybe have a bigger impact, mm -hmm. then you need to say, okay, I'm gonna focus on this one and less the other. And that's always hard to do. It's a very, very difficult decision. Um, similarly, you know, having a project not work yeah. And then say, okay, we need to stop this change and work on a different one. And, you know, that's always challenging because if you think it's a good idea, you'd like to be able to give it's it like 110% yeah. shot that yeah. it's going to work or not. I see. But not every idea works. So you have to sometimes say, okay, that's it. We're not going to work anymore on this. We're going to focus on this subject. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, okay. So final question. So can you give some advice or final thoughts for, uh, BME, BU, BME, undergrad, grad students in general? In general, uh, take the opportunity to do as much as you can mm -hmm. during this time period of your life. I think as an undergraduate or a graduate student, it's really a unique opportunity to learn and to be exposed to different philosophies, different theories, different people, meeting people around the world. I think that's all really important at this stage of your life and that will build a foundation for, for you to be successful. Because mm -hmm. when you leave BU as an undergrad or a graduate student, the chances are you're not gonna be doing exactly the same thing you did True. during graduate school, yep. right? You're not gonna work on the same project. So the individuals that are gonna hire you or the companies that are gonna hire you are not gonna hire you because you know how to do this because that's what your graduate work was on or mm -hmm. that's what you did as an undergraduate researcher. They're hiring you because of the way you think and the way you solve problems, and the way you analyze a situation. Those are the skill sets that they want to take advantage of, not the fact that you know how to do this one small thing. And so that's why I think it's important to be 
you know, get the skill set that you need, but also think about all these other things that are important for you. Because you're going to do something very different when you leave the U here. True. You're not going to do exactly the same thing true. you did. Very true. I worked on sound waves making materials. <laughs> I don't do that now, and very few people do. But that doesn't mean it wasn't interesting, it wasn't exciting, and I didn't. It gave me a chance to learn about how to solve problems and how to do science and how to do engineering, and I think that's what's important. I resonate with you a lot in terms of like. How to learn how to think. I think that this is pretty much the entire whole point of this project. Is also through like talking to you to understand how you think, and yes. hopefully we can close the mind gap between graduate students versus you. Yeah. So I wonder, you know, as an undergrad or grad students, but how do they develop like how to think? It comes from questioning. Question. So all I do every day is ask questions. Okay. That's really my job. And okay. so by asking questions, I have students think about what the answers are.、Mm -hmm. And if I don't like the answer, I go no, <laughs> go back and think about it, and come give me another answer. And so、okay. it's that process of where every、mm -hmm. other day I see you as a student, and I ask you a question. And it's that thinking process that we go through that helps develop the skill sets. That you need to be successful. Okay, and not only just ask questions, but ask valuable questions. Yeah, yeah.、But、how do you ask valuable questions? You just do. You、okay. just do. You、cool. know, you think about it, and you come up with a good question, and you ask. And okay. You ask about the details, and what about this, and what about that? What happened? This? What was the timing?、Mm. You know? Okay. So questions. That's what I like to do. I ask lots of questions. I can tell. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you so much for、Great. for your time. And then, thank you.、Yeah. This is very very wonderful. I always believe that a person's words are the output of what he or she thinks. When you watch the interview, I wish you ask yourself, why Professor Grandstaff says what he said, and what was his thought process behind his words. Two things that really stand out to me about him: number one, self discipline and consistent work ethic. He has already been a highly respected and well-established faculty and a researcher, but still works 10 to 12 hours every day, six days a week. So weekly, that is at least 60 highly efficient, and intense working hours. This makes me wonder why Professor Grandstaff has the self-discipline to work so hard for so many years. He said, "Bella, I like what I do. I like teach students how to do research." I like to commercialize the ideas in order to help more people. I just want to create an impact. Number two, well-rounded. The general public may have misconceptions about people in academia, something like we are all nerds. But Professor Grandstaff is far from being a nerd, not even close. In fact, it is very challenging to be a distinguished researcher and faculty. You have to do great and impactful research. That usually takes years of relentless hard work in order to make the results look effortless. You have to teach well. You have to know how to communicate, not just via writing papers, but deliver oral presentations based on different target audience in conferences, seminars, and university visits. Most importantly, and this is critical in BME, Professor Grandstaff conducts cross-disciplinary research. He builds connections and collaborates with experts from other scientific domains and clinicians who use the medical devices frontline. Each pain point could be a potential business opportunity. That's how he founded seven companies. I hope you enjoyed the interview as much as I do. Feel free to leave a comment down below and what questions you want to ask the faculty. We will try to accommodate your requests as much as we can and help you to resolve your question in the future interviews. Also, if you find the content very helpful, please share. BME GSC and I want as many people as possible to benefit from this video. See you next time.